Well, hello, everybody. My name is Cynthia Newland. And as Jenny mentioned, we know one another from the university setting, but we also know each other from a collective. We work with a group called Health Made Simple. So what I'm gonna do is share my screen so you can see a PowerPoint and we can um, be like really official with some things that you can um, take a look at as I'm going along. So can everybody see that kind of okay? Yeah. All right. And then I'm recording this at the same time. So what you'll have access to is this recording afterwards and you can share it um, with your friends or with your parents so they can get this information too because they're probably the ones who are the hunters and gatherers for you when you're eating. You probably are dependent on some of them to get the um, get your meals together. So anyway, um, this is a Nutrition for Dancers talk. And as I mentioned, Jenny and I are a part of a community called Health Made Simple. And if you have a Facebook account, um, you can check us out on Health Made Simple for dancers. And that's just a great, amazing resource with lots of different tips that we're putting on there every week, sharing other ways of gaining health and wellness and injury and injury prevention. So as we're going through this talk, I really want you to think about um, your own self and are you taking care of you? When we're talking about this concept of care, we really are looking at the importance of these pillars of health. And a part of that is eating and nourishing yourself well, but other parts of that really look at hydration, rest, um, sleep, making sure that you have some kind of like a mindful practice, like meditation, if you're spending a lot of time on the computer or on your phone, that you're really taking time away from that. So those are all a part of this um, look at the pillars of health. And as we're um, continuing to go through here, I know that you are at a Christian uh, school, and which is so beautiful. And I wanted to go through a couple of scriptures for you and with you. Um, this one's from Colossians. It says, for in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. And I foundationally believe that with all of my heart that we've been put here on this earth to praise God and to honor God through the gifts and the talents and this body that he's given us. Uh, we are image bearers. And this scripture in Genesis reminds us that God created mankind in his own image and that he created them male and female. So not only have we been created for God, but we've been created in the likeness of God. And I believe this scripture is so important that reminds us to honor God with our entire person. And it's a scripture that I refer to quite a bit from 1 Corinthians. Do you not know that your bodies are the temple of God, the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought with a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. And I believe we can honor God with our bodies in so many incredible ways, but definitely the ways that we care for them. Um, you all are ex exercising a lot through all the dancing that you're doing, but we can honor God um, through taking care of feeding and fueling and nourishing our bodies well. So that's going to be the focus primarily of this time together. Um, I do have other teachings and we do through Health Made Simple about other ways of caring for yourself, injury and injury prevention and things like that. Um, but if you follow your handout and you can look up here periodically, I'm going to keep going through this kind of quickly. Um, but again, we'll have this for reference at a later time. So why good nutrition? Why is it important to eat well? Um, so when you go to the fridge, do you look like this? You can take a look at that screen. Is that what you look like? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So benefits of eating well and good nutrition, it increases your productivity. It helps your bone and muscle strength. It improves your energy. It helps you to have a healthy heart, enhances your mood, regulates your weight, and 
li you live longer when you have those um, goals in mind. Um, as we're looking at the standard American diet, I also actually call this the SAD diet um, because so much of the food that we eat generally in America is highly processed and only a small percentage, about 6% of our daily caloric intake is coming from whole food, unprocessed plant food sources. So the majority of the food we're eating is processed. So I'm not gonna take time to have you raise your hands and hear from you and how many of you, um, you know, eat fruits and veggies every day or how many of you are eating burgers and pizza and things like that. But I'm just speaking generally in America, that usually is the trend, that there's a lot of food that's being processed. And so it might look like this. And um, so the concern about that is, is there's very few real fruits and vegetables when you look at these pictures. There might be a little slice of tomato on a burger or a little bit of lettuce, but the majority of the food is highly processed. So I'm going to teach you ways to eat that isn't focused on that being the majority of the food that you're getting in your daily intake. Um, when we're seeing the majority of your food coming from a processed um, source, um, it increases the inflammation in your body. And it's called the inflammation dance. And the result of all of that inflammation is things like arthritis and auto autoimmune disease, cardiovascular disease, Alzheimer's, diabetes, neurological, and pulmonary concerns. And so you might think, oh, I'm really young and I'm not really too concerned about that. But we're seeing more stages, uh, I mean, more cases of onset of children's diabetes than ever before and a lot of health concerns for children. So we want to start at a young age helping to teach and train and educate you to eat well so you aren't going to have these concerns later in life. Um, our food quality is decreasing, and so that's a part of why our bodies are more inflamed. And when I, when I use that terminology, inflammation, I'm not talking about when you like turn your ankle and your ankle swells and you have some kind of injury. I'm talking about an internal inflammation on the cellular level where your body is um, not functioning as it's been designed to because it can't function well because it's not being fed well or it's coming in contact with lots of different pesticides and herbicides and other toxins that you're either putting in your body or are in our environment. So we really want to try to aim for decreasing the amount of toxins and those activities that are around our life that may be damaging to us. So Eating real food is the solution. Um, and so when I say eat a whole food, um, you know, a source of nutrition, I don't mean like eating a whole pizza. Um, I'm talking about whole food, like things that you can recognize, fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds and grains and things like that, that have been plucked or picked. And you can see what they look like and understand that they are from a whole source is what I'm referring to. Um, so junk food, junky carbs are um, equivalent to empty carbs. So sometimes you might have heard that terminology where you um, have um, empty calories. And so some of these foods are really just that. They're empty calories, um, sugary foods that um, are usually found in cakes and candies and cookies and chips and crackers and things like that. And so I'm going to go through in just a moment a system for us to look at to make a determination what category is this food in that I'm eating, but really want to stay away from a lot of those junky carbs because they don't have good um, quality of nutrition in them. Um, sugar is one of those questions. You know, how much sugar can I eat every day? So sugar basically now we're seeing is um, in our average American child's diet that they're eating about five pounds of sugar a week. And you all know the five pound bag of sugar is pretty large. And to think about how could somebody consume that much sugar in a week, um, but what happens is it's hidden in lots of things. And when we're eating that much sugar, it's basically suppressing our immune system for four to six hours. So whenever you're eating all of this added sugar, your immune system doesn't have an opportunity to continue to stay activated. It gets suppressed. 
And so here's some of the sources, and I'll just say them out loud because some of you might not be able to see them. But in Cokes or sodas, um, about 33% of our sugars are hidden in there, and we might not realize how much sugar is in those. Um, in ketchup, um, little packet sweetened drinks, uh, cereals, candies, cakes, cookies, different types of syrups, um, even like peanut butter, nut butters, and then just the sources themselves like table sugar, honey, um, those are some of the sources of added sugar. So when I'm saying about the amount of sugar to take in your diet, I'm not speaking of the sugar that is in like an apple or a banana or a potato. Those have natural sugars. These are added sugars that we really want to make sure we're only eating a certain quantity of those every day. So this is, again, just another example. This is showing basically when you have um, something like a Mountain Dew. If you just have a small, like 16-ounce Mountain Dew, there's 19 and a half teaspoons of sugar just in that one small Mountain Dew. Did you know that? That's a lot of sugar, isn't it? So it's just being aware, where am I getting my extra sugar from and where am I getting it from a natural source? So these are sources that are being added into a diet um, that you would be consuming. So how much sugar basically we're looking at for women? It's about six teaspoons a day, men around nine teaspoons, and children four to eight year old. So once you get above in that teen age, you really can start fitting into the women and men's category. So it's only six teaspoons for the females and nine teaspoons for males. So it is a little bit more for the guys, and that's generally because often their bodies are bigger and their metabolism is different than ours. So another topic I want to talk about is your pH balance. So some of you might know about um, pH from science and understanding like if you have a swimming pool, what they do often is check that swimming pool to make sure that the base in the water is not too acidic because if the water in the swimming is, pool is too acidic, that's where fungus that's where different bacteria grows. But if you have a reservoir of water that is more alkaline, then bacteria and fungus doesn't grow in there. You need to make sure that your body then is like that pool, that it's checked, that the things that you're putting in it are more alkaline forming than acidic forming. So here's a little chart, and basically what this chart shows is the acidic forming foods that you consume are those things that are more processed, like the sodas and the burgers and the different types of syrups and pastries, um, caffeine, things like that tend to be more acidic forming in your body. And then if you go over on the other spectrum, the other things that are more alkaline forming in your body are just what I was talking about earlier on. It's your whole foods. It's your fruits and your veggies. It's those things that are from a more natural source that are going to be more alkaline forming. And if you look on it, which it might be a little bit hard to see, is there's a picture of some citrus, like limes, oranges, lemons, and you might think, wow, I thought that a lemon was very acidic. Well, it is acidic in its natural form, but once you consume it and it starts going through the digestive process, lemons actually can be one of the more alkaline forming foods in your body to cause your, your base of your water, to um, the water reservoir in your body to be more um, alkaline forming. And so the reason why it's so important to have so much water in your body um, to be constantly being fed and nourished is because um, we have about 70%, as you might know, of your body is water. So your brain has so much water in it, your heart, your lungs, your kidney, your, you know, all of your organs, your skin, 70% um, 70, 70 of our body is water. So we need to put a fresh reservoir of water flowing through our bodies um, really regularly. If you ever start feeling thirsty, that means you've already become dehydrated. 
So you need to make sure that you're constantly hydrating. And a good equation is this. You basically take your body weight, and once you've determined that, then you divide that in half, and then that amount is equivalent to ounces. So for example, a person who weighs 120 pounds, half of that is 60, then 60 is the equivalent of ounces that that person should be drinking every day to constantly be flushing their body. Now, if you're an athlete, you're a dancer, if you live in a more um, warm, hot climate and you're sweating more often, then you need to give yourself even more water. But that's just a real good um, equation to be able to use. So how much water again, two hours before exercising, drinking 14 to 20 ounces or about a minimum of two cups of fluid. During exercise, if you're permitted to, drinking five to 12 ounces. So another one to one and a half cups of fluid every 15 to 20 minutes. Again, I know that's hard when we're in a dance class, um, but if you're able to take an intermittent break drinking water, that's really good for you. And then after exercise, drinking 16 to 24 ounces, um, so two to three cups. So you see the greatest percentage of the water consumption is after you've worked out. So we're understanding that before you're working out, you're really getting a good reservoir, but afterwards, because you've got to replenish what your body has lost. So why do we need to drink water? Again, it removes the toxins in your body. It rages, raises your energy level. Um, some of you might have times like in the afternoon where you're feeling kind of sluggish and tired. Sometimes that's simply just because you haven't hydrated your body enough. And so our body feels tired because it's not functioning well because it's dehydrated. Um, drinking water can help you lose weight, promotes healthy skin. It can prevent arthritis can help you to fight infection because you're flushing out the germs and the different bacteria that's trying to cling to your body. Um, it reduces the risk of cancer and it helps to promote a healthy heart. So we all want to be healthy and drinking water really is a good solution to make sure we're maintaining health as much as possible. This is just a little quick image and we can make sure Jenny sends this to you because my hope is she can get your email addresses and send this link to you and send some other resources to you as well. Um, but you can make your own homemade sports drink because if you um, are you know, informed, you would realize there's a lot of extra added sugar in the sports drinks that are sold in a commercial way. But you can make your own, and we can send you a link for some real easy, healthy recipes to make your own sports drinks. Um, veggies, so seven to 13, sometimes nine to 13 servings of fruits and veggies. Um, to eat that amount a day allows your body to do the work it needs to do to constantly repair. God made our bodies as this self-healing entity, but we just have to put the right things in it so it will function like he's created it and designed it. So with this plate, what it's showing is 50%, so half of your plate could be optimally the amount of fruits and veggies um, that you're consuming is about half. When we're looking at the protein rich foods, that's only about one quarter of your plate and then any kind of whole grains, fiber rich carbohydrates. So when you're looking at the percentage, you're really not needing what tends to be the American portion of the greatest percentage is protein and only a little bit of fruits and veggies. It's really almost opposite of that. So here we go, here's the no list. We want you to look at not consuming um, high fructose corn syrup. You probably would be really surprised when you start looking at the boxes of the foods that you're consuming, different kinds of cookies and even crackers, things like that. You might think, oh, crackers are good. But if you look at and read the label, it might say that it's been processed with high fructose corn syrup or hydrogenated oils artificial flavors, artificial colors. Really trying to stay away from those things will allow your body to, again, process as God's made it and created it. Another thought is um, grazing. So when you're eating every day, you don't have to think about only eating the 
it's standard again American thought of these three square meals um, eating throughout the day breaking that down into smaller meals so as you're exercising you're constantly able able to fuel a little bit more so like Ginny said she's got a snack here for you in just a few minutes for you to be able to taste that and that's just a good way to constantly continue to fill up the tank so the ener energy you're expending will have a replacement in another few hours um, and another key I wanted to talk about is just the benefits of sleep. Some of you might not get this optimal seven to nine hours of sleep at night. And that really is an ideal amount because when our bodies are going to bed, when you're sleeping, that's when your body is repairing. If you go to bed and you just ate really late, right before you went to bed, then your body is gonna spend time digesting for four hours before it gets a chance to repair the damage that's been done throughout the day. So trying optimally to get that seven to nine hours of sleep at night, and then trying to stop eating around four hours before you go to bed. Because when you're sleeping, and the benefits of that is you have increased energy, better concentration, better decision making, improves your memory, ability to manage stress, improves physical health, and boosts and um, gives you a better immune system. And all those things for dancers are important. We need to think well. We need to think clearly. We need to be able to hold on to our memory, hold on to combinations. And so it's really great to know that if I'm resting my body, that will help me to have better productivity during my waking hours. All right, here we go. So this is one formula for looking at um, ways to think about food. And this is called the traffic light eating system. So we all are familiar with traffic lights, the red and the yellow and the green. When you think about green lights, green light means go. And green light food is fruits and veggies. So green light food, every fruit and vegetable fits in the green light category. They're safe to eat. They're good to eat. They're really wonderful for you. Um, usually our green light foods, our fruits and veggies are grown and not manufactured. They're low in calories. They're high in nutrients. They're very colorful and usually can be eaten raw. So that's really great that they're so accessible to us. They're convenient. They're quick and natural. Um, they have fiber in them. They're beautiful and appealing in color. They're nutritious and delicious and packed with vitamins and minerals. Um, so when I eat my food often and I just give thanks to God for his constant provisions, I'm really saying thank you, God, for your provisions. But I'm also saying thank you because when I look at my plate, there's usually a lot of color on it. And I love the beauty of all of that color. Um, and then also another benefit is it can reduce disease. And so when you think again, wow, I'm young, I'm not really too worried about that. But again, what you're doing now in your body to your body is going to continue to affect you as you grow older. So you really want to pay attention now to the ways you're feeding and fueling yourself. And of course, um, all those fruits and veggies are God's gift to us. All right, yellow light. What do we do? We slow down. It doesn't mean that you stop entirely. It doesn't mean that you can't ever, you know, start to proceed forward. It just means you just need to be really aware and cautious and yield to those temptations, possibly to constantly feed and fuel yourself um, with just things that are coming from this yellow light category. So here we go. You thought you liked me before, but now you might not like me so much because I'm going to give you a slowdown to think about eating some things before you constantly are just maybe eating without thinking. All right, so pasta, brown rice, breads, tortillas, eggs, lean red meats, nuts and seeds, olive oil, soy foods, fish, cheese, Greek yogurt. All of those are things that you need to think about it before you're eating them. doesn't mean that you have to stop. It just means think, be a little bit more slower about consuming those foods. Chicken and turkey also fit in that category as well. And so here's why. They are okay for you, these yellow light foods, but not too much as compared to green light foods. And the reason is yellow light foods usually have more calories 
and they usually have more fat or sugar. And so there's good things like an avocado's got lots of natural fat in it. But when we have other foods that have been made, like a bread that has excessive oils or things like that put in it, that's added. It's not how it came in its natural form. Um, again, it's not that it's a bad thing. For eating a bread is a good thing. It's just what's the source of the bread that you're eating. And so just being aware of that, thinking through that. Um, grains are good for you, though. Just being aware that when you're eating grains, you want to eat things. If it's bread that you're buying, you want to eat the bread that says on the package it's made from whole grains. Because when something's made from a whole grain, that means you're getting the nutrients in its original form. When something says it's whole wheat, then it's been stripped a bit to become whole wheat taken from the whole grain. If it's a white bread, or a white pasta, generally what happens is they strip it even further from that whole wheat source, and then often they bleach it. And you might not be aware of that, but usually if you have a bread, a white bread, it's had a chemical processing of bleaching it to get it to that place, to give it that look and that aesthetic. So grains like barley, brown rice, buckwheat, bulgur wheat, um, millet, oatmeal, popcorn, whole wheat bread, crackers, um, pasta, crackers, those things can be good, but you just want to get them from a whole grain source as possible. All right, so red light foods, here we go. Bah, 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 bah. So red lights, get to red light, you need to stop. You really need to think before you go again. And so here's some of those foods that are on a red light source. A lot of those greasy things are fries, fried chicken. And I live here in Mississippi and they love fried foods here, let me tell you. Um, but different things like our burgers and pizzas. Again, it doesn't mean that you can't ever eat a burger again or have pizza again. It's just really think about how often you're eating them and is that a part of your diet every single day. Here's other red light foods. Those are your chips, those processed cookies, um, it's processed crackers, things that, again, have a high concentration of those things on the quote, no list, the hydrogenated oils, the food additives, the food colors, those you want to think about eating them um, before you just automatically consume them. And I know some of you are thinking, oh, these are things that I love so much. But we can give you even a substitution chart of some things that you may want to look at making a shift to substitute um, instead of um, eating these things every single day. So that's your pastries and your donuts. That's the candy, frozen yogurts, fatty meats, chips, um, white breads and rice, sugary beverages, the soda, um, pops, juice drinks. Those things all are fitting in the um, red light category. Processed meats, bacons, hams, hot dogs, all of that. Again, just really think before you eat those. Again, green light foods, go crazy. Eat them as much as you want, but the yellows and the reds, you just need to be a bit more mindful about it. And the reason is with the red light foods, they are lower in nutrients. They're higher in calories. These food often have those artificial things, the artificial sweeteners, the hydrogenated oils, trans fats, and foods that are high in fats in general. So it's just being smart. Start reading a label. Start becoming aware of the contents of what you're eating and um, being conscientious of thinking before you put it into your mouth. And again, the red light foods are usually higher in sugar. All right, so protein, this is a question sometimes we get for um, our athletes that we're working with and dancers. Um, a child, about 70 pounds, needs about 70 grams of protein per day. So that is one per one. One pound of weight is equivalent to one gram, and that's for just the general child. Um, when we get into the adult, and again, the adult doesn't mean you're 18. It can really be like um, 13, 14, 15, once your body starts changing a little bit more that you fit into that other category. So then it splits into one half of a gram of protein per pound of body weight. So if somebody weighs 130 pounds, then they need 65 grams of protein. 
So I'm going to share with you um, about how it's different for our athletes and how it's different for our dancers. So endurance athletes, um, including dancers, they synthesize more protein for fuel because of the nature of how your body is being so actively used. Um, so we need to increase the protein. So for the 1.2 to 1.4 grams now per body weight, and usually about 15 to 25% of your dietary intake. So for females, that's equivalent to 66 to 94 grams, and males, 84 to 119 grams. So basically, you have basically you know, a, a free pass card to eat a little bit more protein when you're as active as you are as an athlete or as a dancer. And we know that we need protein in our bodies. Um, exercise is really incredible. Exercise plus nutrition is really the best way to build healthy muscles and for muscle growth to occur. So both of those working in tandem are really important. So here's some protein for dancers ideas. Um, and you're gonna see some interesting things on here like asparagus and avocados and broccolis and cauliflower, kale and lentils, quinoa, sweet potatoes and nuts and seeds. So if I would have asked you what's the best percentage of um, protein that you can get from anything you can eat, probably you would have said what? What would you say? If you're gonna eat protein, where are you gonna get the source? Eat. So meat, and maybe where else? Eggs, yeah. And sometimes people say cheese as well. And we're just conditioned to think that that's the best source or the main only source. Um, and I don't have a picture of this slide here, but if you have 100 calories of broccoli and you have 100 calories of red meat, there's actually more protein in the broccoli. Now that's a good heaping size of broccoli, but there's more protein in it than in that red meat. And it's, again, it's a part of God's plan and his design that he created everything that grows has protein in it. All plants have protein. So I'm just giving some more alternative ideas of ways to consume good portions of protein, but not necessarily from all of the animal sources that we tend to go to. So here's some protein rich foods. Basically best choices are your fruits and your veggies. Um, your, I'm not fruits, your veggies, your nuts and grains, about 90%. If you can get the greatest percentage of your proteins coming from those sources, vegetables, nuts and seeds, legumes. And then the next choice for protein are those things that we just talked about, your meats, your dairies from lean fish, lean meat, usually those things being grilled or broiled are better. Um, often we get those and they've been dipped in a batter and then deep fried. And so you're not getting the optimal amount of nutrition um, because you're adding extra breading and things to it. Um, eggs and dairy products. Um, as you're looking at that, we're saying 10%. And this statistic is coming from looking at um, science, the cultures and societies that really eat more in the category of our plants, and I'll show you a slide for that here in just a moment, and less in the category in our meats and our dairies, really have quite a bit better health. Um, go nuts, it's great. Eating nuts, if you can eat your nuts raw, that's better. And I know that sometimes we have different kinds of nut allergies and we have to be aware of that. And um, that's just something that continues to increase in our culture that there's more airborne allergies. And I think there's something there at your studio as well that there's some, some sensitivities. So it's just being aware that, um, that you can get some good nutrition if that's not a real problem for you. Um, sometimes we're seeing success, even if there's people who have nut allergy, that they can even eat something like sunflowers that have some of the same protein, but just aren't coming from the same source. Um, so carbohydrates, when you think about that often, I know we probably think about our carbohydrates coming from just like breads and pastas, but there really are carbs in fruit, fresh fruit carbohydrates and fresh vegetables. Dairy products have um, carbohydrates, beans and legumes. So our whole bread, um, cereals, pastas, those we tend to think about, potatoes, rice, um, but there's good carbohydrates in those fresh fruit and fresh veggie um, um, portions as well. 
All right, we're gonna get into a little bit of science here. So oxidative stress. So oxidative stress is something that um, is happening to our bodies every single day. When you have oxidation occur, it looks like, um, like if you're at the beach and there's a lot of rust happening, it's because oxidation of what's going on in the air is causing a chemical compound breakdown. Um, so daily oxidative stress, it does affect our health. Fighting oxidative stress is something that we have the ability to do, and the balance of nutrition that is needed to combat oxidation can only be obtained from whole plant food sources. So here's a picture of oxidation. So if you can't see it clearly, um, just in your mind, think about an apple. You get an apple, you cut it in half. What happens after time? It starts to turn what? Brown. brown it turns brown and that's because the air has free radicals in it and because that apple has been now exposed to those free radicals what it's doing is starting to break down the, the concentrated chemical um, um, I'm sorry that the atom the structure of the cell itself so basically free radicals are these little um, critters kind of that fly around in the air and what they do is cause damage. They are a group of atoms with an odd or unpaired number of electrons that can um, affect um, a fortified um, atom. And so basically they're missing an electron, they cause a negative effect, and once they're formed, they can start then collecting together and clinging together. And that's how we start to find different kinds of growths and cancers and things that um, aren't so healthy for us. So here's a picture of the free radicals. So a healthy, stable molecule has its full compound. An unhealthy one that's been affected by free radicals basically starts to break down. And so it's missing an electron. So the free radicals, they steal an electron from this fortified atom. And so what we need to do to prevent that from happening, prevent the oxidative stress from happening is to do a combating with antioxidants. And so basically, when you have physical activity and physical exercise, you take more hits every day. And so now the average person is taking about 10,000 hits of free radicals every day. And that's just from having a sedentary life of breathing normally. But when you're more active, like athletes, like dancers, you then are taking more hits. So you're breathing more than your other friends who might not be physically active. And so that's causing more damage, more oxidative stress, more free radical damage. And so that accumulation every day can add up from day to day and cause more deterioration in your body. So again, antioxidants are the combat to oxidative stress. And so we really wanna make sure that those free radicals are held at bay and how we do that is through antioxidants. When we're seeing so much oxidative stress, and this is really little and hard for you to read, but basically oxidative stress, free radical damage, cause things like um, conditions that are affecting your heart and your skin health, your kidneys, your joints, your lungs, your brain, your immune system, multiple organs, your eyes, all of those things can have a breakdown in how God has created and designed them because of the stress. And that oxidative stress can be in the things that you're breathing through radical, free radicals, but oxidative stress also happens when you're having a stressed out day, um, when you have to have a CT scan, when you're traveling on an airplane and closer to the sun. Those things are also causing this oxidative stress in your body. Yes, the food that you're eating does have an effect, but the other things, the other toxins and chemicals in our environment are also um, a contributor to that. Okay, science lessons continuing. How many of you have ever heard of the phrase um, gut health? Have you ever heard of that? Your gut brain, gut intelligence. So your microbiome 
basically is God's plan for how the bacteria on our body is housed. You have bacteria behind your ears, under your fingernails, um, just in your eyelashes, on your skin. Bacteria is everywhere. The greatest percentage of the bacteria in our bodies are in our guts, in your stomach, in your intestines. And so about 90% of your microbiome, your gut health is, um, I mean, your bacteria is in your gut. And that is an equivalent to when you look in this, the heavens and you see the Milky Way, there's trillions of stars in that Milky Way, right? So those stars looking in the sky is similar to the amount of bacteria that's in our bodies. So here's a quick look at, we have four to six pounds of bacteria in your body. Four to six pounds. And we know that in our body, we need the good bacteria to keep our um, bodies healthy and the bad bacteria makes our body sick. So when you think about the amount of bacteria in your body, you've got to constantly feed the good bacteria. And how you feed the good bacteria is plants. Plants provide the antioxidants. And the sources of antioxidants all look like this. They're different fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds and grains and healthy things like that that are predominantly on that green light list. Yay, I'm seeing you're getting some good healthy snacks right now. That's awesome. So we're going to talk about snacks here in a moment. But the first thing we're going to talk about in your eating is breakfast. So why do we need to eat good breakfast? Every day it builds brighter brains. It helps to promote better behavior. It helps to control our weight. And so eating a really good breakfast in the morning really starts to get your metabolism going and helps you to start um, thinking well on the onset of the morning. All right, here's some just quick breakfast off it, off options. Um, whole grain cereals, different types of nut butters with a muffin, an English muffin, veggie, omelet, whole grain pancakes, scrambled eggs. All of those things can fit into a good breakfast category. Um, there's cheese options, cheese melts, or one of the things that I enjoy is a Avocado toast, that can be really great option for um, starting the day. Um, nut butters with apple slices. Um, and so you see these options of cheeses. There's also plant-based cheese options. When I talk about milk, there's also nut-based um, options, but there's also some other plant milks like an oat milk or a rice milk that are coming from other plant sources and not necessarily only from a animal source. Um, salad in a jar, that's really a fun thing and I can make sure that Jenny sends that to you, a recipe for different ways to make these salad in a jars. So this is a really awesome um, way to pack up some lunches ahead of time to make sure that you're getting a really good um, nutrition, nutrition filled lunch. Um, and they're a lot of fun to make. So healthy snacks. So it's what you're doing right now is getting a quick snack. Um, healthy snacks are things that you really want to look at having accessible and like even kind of graze on it. We've got these grazing trays that are a lot of fun as an option just to keep the snacks out that are good. If you see it, you're going to eat it. If they're hidden in the cupboard, you might not go for it. So maybe um, setting a few healthy snacks out for you. Um, nut butters and sliced apples, hummus. I think that's what you all have, right? Today, are you eating some hummus? No, because of allergies, but we're having um, some dip in our veggies. Some dip in veggies, that's awesome. Um, trail mix, um, tortilla roll-ups, um, whole grain, um, real fresh fruit, muffins, healthy bars, smoothies. So these are all really good options for some snacks. So smoothies is the one I totally love. I do a smoothie every day, and I'm going to show you quickly um, some things about thinking about making a smoothie, um, making them with fresh and frozen fruits or veggies, um, using, you can use nut milks, and like I mentioned before, you could even use a rice milk or an oat milk. 
um, adding chia seeds and ground flax seeds, choosing plant-based protein and not whey protein. And so some of you all might make smoothies and use a smoothie mix. I just would encourage you to look at the contents and the whey-based, if you're using one that is that milk-based, uh, we're finding that our animal products like that milk base can be more carcinogenic than a non-milk um, base. So think about that as you might be um, making a smoothie. Jenny and I use this. We use this with our Health Made um, Simple community. It's called um, Juice Plus, and I think that's what she's got for you today to be able to try that out when it's smoothie making time after we're finished our talk. Um, it comes in chocolate or vanilla. Um, so making a smoothie, staying cool through the summer, that's a really awesome way to get some good nutrients in. We like this Juice Plus one just because it's low in fat, low in sugar, low glycemic, it's gluten-free, it's vegan, it's non-GMO. So it's a plant protein base. Um, it's filled with really good fiber, and then it has the ancient grains and sprouts in it. So broccoli, alfalfa, radish, amaranth, quinoa, and millet. So it just has some really good superfoods in it to make sure you're getting um, your body's packed with the good nutrients that it needs. You can make these little balls. I don't know if you've ever seen protein balls where you can take a a nut base or you can take other um, base and then an oats mm -hmm. and Huh? Miss Newland, yes. I'm so sorry. We're gonna have to um, wrap it up because I do want to do the smoothies with them still. Great. So I just wasn't sure if you had a few last words to say. Perfect. I'll do that. Um, so basically, let me just share this. Um, it's really important for you to eat the colors of the rainbow. And as you're doing that, the reason it's so important is that we have. Um, how God's created. The red foods are different than the orange, and the orange are different than the yellow, and each color God has made and created has a different use in our body, and so those are um, really important. So when I say eat the colors of the rainbow, you hope I'd say this, right? Eat a bunch of Skittles. That's not what I'm talking about. Um, so phytonutrients, you just need to be aware that all of the plants that you can consume are really full of different kinds of nutrients. And this is just something to think about, um, a way to get a lot of good nutrients. We do this again with Jenny and I um, through Juice Plus. We use all these plant powders. They're backed in research. Um, this slide shows the one that's the information about the cultures and societies that eat more plants. They really are much more healthy. Um, and the reason we choose this is because of all the research that aligns with people who eat more foods based with um, just a whole food diet with good nutrients. They are able to get the optimal amount of nutrients they need. And then the last thing is the yummy gummies. Um, basically, if you're a child age um, four through college age, you can get all of these nutrients through these really good gummies um, for free. If a parent places an order, you're able to get all those fruits, all those veggies that your body needs um, in this one yummy gummy um, concentrated form. And so um, the results are just showing the kids who eat those, they are missing fewer days at school, that they are um, going to the doctors less often, that they're eating better, they crave more fruits and veggies. And so I'll just end with this, energy tips, remember to eat breakfast, smoothies are really great. Every two to three hours eat um, throughout the day. Again, make sure you're hydrating, um, eating those snacks are really great. Um, remember to eat the real food, the importance of good nutrition. Um, God said, behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the surface of the earth and every tree which has fruit yielding seed. It's for you, for your food. I have given you every green plant for food. And it was so. So basically, we just want to remind you to eat well, feed and fuel your body well. Um, if you have um, questions, Jenny's going to be able to answer those. Um, I'm going to close it off with these two dancing bananas from Psalm 139. Let them praise his name with dancing. 
And so thank you so much for this time to be able to be with you all. I pray God's blessing in your continued training. I'm just so excited that um, you have Jenny as a teacher because she's really amazing. Um, enjoy those wonderful um, smoothies that she's going to share with you. And she's going to pass along some more of the Health Made Simple information to you. So you can listen to this at a different time. You can share this with your family. And again, just God's blessings to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So let me do this real quick. I'm going to end the screen share and I'm going to take a, um, a little photo of you so I can see all of you get in there together. Get in close. Here we go. Are we ready? One, two. Here we go. Now, silly one, go. Silly, silly, silly. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Blessings to you all. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. All right. So, so really fast, we're going to pour it out. Um, I just put like a cup of milk, a half a cup of juice, and then one banana and some frozen fruit. Really simple. Nothing. It doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to have a thousand ingredients in it. It's really not complicated at all. Um, I have. Um, I have a notebook over there that's on the bar. If you would like more information with the PowerPoints, uh, snacks, um, recipes, that type of thing, to even pass on to your parents, please grab the